Sales activity in the Perth metro region increased in July with Reba.com data showing volumes were up almost 70% compared to April across both dwellings and land sales. So let's get into the data with this month's market update. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to our market update video series where you can stay up to date with the markets and manner and find out what's happening in your local area. Now please remember to like, comment and share this video and if it's your first time tuning in, don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. So REWA President Damien Collins said while sales activity was quiet during the initial stages of the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, it's great to see levels pick back up to where they were before the pandemic hit. Mr Collins said, while there are no surprises with the increase in land sales for the month, which saw a 121% increase compared to April, it was pleasing to see that both houses up 58% and unit sales up 51% also saw a significant increase. Now, according to Rewa.com data, Byford had a 90% increase in sales activity compared to June, which was closely followed by Port Kennedy up 88%, Quinns Rock up 50%, Heathridge up 42%, and Banksia Grove up 38%. Now, listings for sale in the Perth metro region also experienced a small 3% increase compared to June. And Mr Collins said, with the increase in sales activity, it's good to see a slight increase in the number of listings for sale, which demonstrates those who are considering selling their property are looking at the favourable market conditions and choosing now to sell. Now, while we've seen a slight increase in listings this month, the number of properties for sale are actually 25% lower than July 2019. Perth's median house price remains stable in July at $475,000 compared to the previous month. Mr Collins said, on an annual basis, prices lowered slightly with the median house price only 2.3% lower than it was in Ju July 2019. CoreLogic's findings for July supported the Rewa.com monthly data showing Perth house values had marginally declined 0.6% during the month. Although Perth's overall median house price remains stable in July, Rewa.com data shows one in three suburbs recorded an increase, Mr Collins said. East Fremantle saw the biggest growth in median house price for the month with a 4.8% increase, and this was followed by Pinjarra up 3.3%, Rivervale up 2.9%, Forestfield 2.7%, and Yanjab up 2.5%. Now, leasing acti activity in the Perth metro area declined 9% over the month. However, Rewa.com data shows it lifted 13% in the three months to July. Mr Collins said, although his leasing volumes were down last month compared to July, tenants remain very active right now, as listings for rent have decreased 7% uh, compared to June and 48% compared to July 2019. The top suburbs to see an increase in leasing activity uh, growth include Leeming, Victoria Park, Stirling, St James and Halls Head. Perth's overall median rent price was stable in the three months to July, holding at $350 per week. Mr Collins said in terms of houses and units, this broke down to $370 per week for houses and $340 per week for units, up $5 per week compared to June. Now, according to Rewa.com data, Applecross saw an 8.2% increase to $595 a week, which was followed by South Perth up 4.2% and Wellard, Cloverdale and Belmont all up 2.9%. Now, with the WA property markets returning towards normality, now is the time to consider the current emergency period tenancy legislation for residential and commercial properties and allow it to end at the current proposed time of 29th September 2020, Mr Collins said. Well, guys, that's it from me. Now, please like, comment and share this video. Don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week. And remember, there's only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot, guys, and bye for now.